Hi. Okay, so what I'd like to do here is run you guys through the process for putting the PyMind development kit on Ubuntu. Now, I've got Ubuntu running inside VirtualBox here on my Mac, so I can do a screencast, but it should work the same pretty much on any Ubuntu and possibly any other Debian platform. So the first thing you have to do is get the latest um, development kit for PyMine, and you can do that courtesy of Google, which will take you to the Google Code page. At Google Code, go to Downloads, and under the downloads, you will see each of the Debian files which I've been creating and putting up there um, for installation. So we can download this one. If you just click on it, it tends to crash because um, Ubuntu doesn't know what to do with a .deb file when it downloads it. Something about it cannot launch the appropriate installation tool. So what you have to do is do save link as and save it to your downloads directory. That's only six and a bit megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long. And in fact, uh, there we are, it's downloaded. So in another window, you can go into a terminal, CD2 downloads, and there's the file there. To install it, sudo uh, gdeb uh, pymine.deb and it'll ask you for your password. And what it's doing now is looking at the Debian file for all of the dependencies that it needs to install. So I'm just gonna answer yes to this question because it installs Django and Apache and all the other things that will be necessary. I'm doing this on a vanilla Ubuntu um, 9.10 installation, so a lot of the stuff's missing. So we hit the Go button, and it'll download all the packages that are required. Um, there's a couple which aren't quite being used yet, like Beautiful Soup uh, is going to be in the future of the mine, but it's not there at the moment. So hopefully it'll save you a little bit of work in the future. But there's not all that much to be done. Apache is the primary uh, requirement here. Oh, and uh, curl for the command line oriented stuff, which I'll explain either face to face or a little bit later in a, another video or something. Anyhow, so it installs all of the prerequisites for the mine, and then it drops you into the mine installation, which is coming up really soon. Just about. Come on, guys. Yay! Now! So this is the mine configuration dialog. Uh, enter a contact email address for web reports. In my case, that's alec.muffet at gmail.com. It'll ask you for two usernames. The first one is your ordinary, unprivileged, I want to log into my mine user. Um, in this case, I'm going to use alec M. I'm going to override the default of root, which it's picked out of my environment. Um, then it asks for the database super username. Uh, the one that the mine uses is pickaxe. I'll go with the default for that. And it goes off, creates some databases using SQLite. And enter a password for the ordinary user. I'm just going to pick Fred for this demo and confirm it. And enter a super user password and confirm it. Sets up some crypto keys, fixes some permissions, and we're done. Although Apache is complaining about not knowing what its domain name is. Well, c'est la vie. Uh, so if we go back over to Firefox now and close this window, I can do a connection to local host on port 9862. And lo and behold, here we are with our login screen. I'm going to log in as the super user. And the password is Fred on this. Do I want to remember this password? Not right now. Let's make this wide so it's nice and big. Now, this is the PyMine welcome screen. We can scroll up and down a bit. Um, basically, there's a series of dashboards across the top where your items, your relations, your comments, tags, virtual URLs, and some search bars are. Uh, yes, as the tooltip says, it's an untidy bunch of search dialogues until I can fix it. And then there's a sort of sidebar for other useful stuff too. Um, the top menu changes here, the stuff menu changes uh, depending on what you're looking at. There's admin links, oops, 
There's uh, admin links down the side, and then there's links to other parts of the mine project, to discussion mail list, and various other things. In fact, this being a screencast, I probably should make the fonts a little bit bigger. That looks a bit better. All right. Uh, the problem is that there is nothing in your mine at the moment. There are no items to be looked at. Uh, if I list all the items, nothing. Uh, so what we do is we go back to the X term and we can put some demo items into your mind to play with. So cd2 slash var slash mine ls. Here you can see uh, the access log and the error log for the mine and the pymine directory, which is where everything lives. cd pymine ls. And that's the actual code. If you want to populate your mine with some demo items, just do this. sudo sh populate mine.sh. That's a script. It will set up everything else. Hit the return button, and it'll ask you for a username, pickaxe, the super user, or you could use your other one, and the password, Fred. And lo and behold, what you're seeing scrolling up the screen is a bunch of XML. The XML is the representations of each item, each relationship, and each tag that goes and gets put into the mine. Uh, that's it. It goes nice and quick because we're using WSGI and Apache to uh, talk to Django. It goes really fast. We go back over to the GUI, hit re uh, reload, and now we've got all sorts of items in the mine. Uh, we can scroll down. Whoops. Uh, that's something interesting. Whenever it does an API call in the top right-hand corner, it gives you some diagnostics, which are mostly invisible most of the time when you mouse over it, but otherwise you don't see them. Uh, if we scroll down the bottom, uh, you will find a PDF document in the mine. Uh, where's the pictures of... Uh, yeah, Buster, Buster.jpg. We can open Buster.jpg, which gets downloaded. It's going a little bit slow because this is virtualization, uh, and it's also a five megabyte file. If I sort of scroll it up to full size, this is full size of the actual object in the mine. Um, if I want to edit the tags for Buster.jpg, I hit the edit button. I'll make the font a little bit bigger. So it's called buster.jpg. We're not going to change the file that's attached. Uh, change the text to be, this is a picture of my cat. Uh, and scroll down and I want to change the tags. Ooh, that's a bug. I'll fix that in a minute. Uh, the tags I want to read, the mine project. I know what that is, that's a bug in the template. I'll fix that in a second. Hit update item and it should be now uh, a picture of my cat and the tag says the mine project. So if we go to our relations and have a list, uh, look down the list of relations uh, by hitting list all relations in the sidebar, here we are, that's better. Um, look at users like Adriana. Adriana has a feed and in her feed her interests are the mine project. That should correspond with the picture of the cat. So we hit Adriana's feed and lo and behold uh, we are now looking at the atom feed. I'll make it a little bit smaller uh, so that it's on screen. There we go. This is Adriana's feed as generated, and the object in the feed is buster.jpg at the top of the feed, most recently updated. Adriana, if she's receiving this feed, could submit a comment on it by filling in, I like the picture of your cat. Of course, because we are not using a real feed reader, but instead using Firefox, we don't get to see everything at, by default. But so, Celebi. This is a body for a comment, and then we hit submit. And here we have the diagnostic XML that's come back as part of the comment submission process. Anyhow, that's a real whistle stop tour of installing a mine on your um, Ubuntu machine. I look forward to hearing from you guys trying it out. Thanks.